physicists dream of finding a unifying theory of everything that will make sense of our world from the infinitesimally small to the cosmologically large. One such theory allows for numerous possible worlds, each with its own laws. Stephen Hawking, who is Director of Research here at the Centre for Theoretical Cosmology in Cambridge, has swung his support behind this so-called M-theory. We've come to talk to Professor Hawking about M-theory and to ask him about the vast landscape of possible universes he says that theory implies. We recorded answers this afternoon to questions we'd sent to the professor earlier. First, how would he explain M-theory to the many people in the UK who have little interest in theoretical physics? M-theory is the theory of everything. It explains how the universe was created out of nothing in the Big Bang and how it behaves now. It governs everything we think and do. Isn't that of interest? So what exactly is M-theory? It's really just maths and can be thought of as an extension of an earlier set of ideas called superstring theory. To complicate things, this was effectively five string theories and a sixth theory called 11-dimensional supergravity. In the mid-1990s, it got simpler. In 1995, Edward Witten at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton gave us what we now call M theory. What Witten explained was that what we thought of as six competing different theories were in reality just six different corners of a deeper and more profound theory that we call M theory. The thing about M theory that most people find hard to get their brains around is that the mathematical equations behind it imply the existence of extra dimensions, which we can't yet detect but which exist alongside the four dimensions of space and time that defines the everyday world around us. M-theory has its critics, who argue that it's not a proper scientific theory because it lacks predictive power. And there's a more straightforward issue to settle. The trouble with theories of everything, like M-theory, is that testing them in the laboratory is, well, tricky, to put it mildly. And that leaves them open to the charge that they're just as much a leap of faith as religion. But some scientists say that may be about to change. Mike Duff has found that the same maths used in M-theory also applies to another field of physics called quantum entanglement, which can be tested. What this means is he's found a way to indirectly test the maths of M-theory. And in that context, we can make very precise predictions that can be tested in the laboratory. Now, does that mean we've shown that M-theory is the theory of everything? No. But what we have done is answer those critics who say that working on M-theory has no useful applications and is a waste of time. The other kind of critic who wants to know, is it the theory of everything, will have to be a bit more patient. Hope you're keeping up. We asked Stephen Hawking about confirming M-theory by observation. M-theory is the only possible unified theory under certain assumptions, the most important of which is that there should be a relation between forces and matter, called supersymmetry. This would predict that elementary particles should occur in pairs. It may be possible to observe this in the Large Hadron Collider, which would go a long way towards confirming M theory experimentally. It's not who you've known, but who you're knowing. Musician E of the band Eels had a more personal reason than most of us for trying to get to grips with concepts like multiple universes and quantum entanglement. His father was a physicist, in fact one of the first to suggest, back in the 1950s, that quantum mechanics implied the existence of worlds parallel to our own. But his ideas were considered heretical to conventional understanding of quantum physics. So how does E think the reaction affected his father? That was probably the central thing that I learned that was so valuable to me was that, you know, he was a 24-year-old genius that was brushed under the carpet and it ruined his life. 
Lately, Hugh Everett's work has enjoyed a renaissance. Well, it's bittersweet. I mean, it, it's really nice to, to, um, that he's getting the notice he deserved long ago, but it's tragic that it's 25 years too late. Everett's children found it hard to understand the attraction of the world of theoretical physics to their withdrawn father. And many today wonder why scientists bother with trying to explain the world in maths. In the past, you've spoken pessimistically about the prospects of the for the human race in the future. Can M theory save us? The survival of the human race depends on whether we act wisely not on whether we have the correct theory of everything. In the long term, we need to spread out into space. Then, an isolated disaster or act of folly can't destroy the entire species. If M-theory proves to be the complete theory of the universe, will it prove or disprove the idea of a benevolent creator? M-theory doesn't disprove God, but it makes him unnecessary. It predicts that the universe will be spontaneously created out of nothing, without the need for a creator. So in a universe where God is rendered unnecessary, how does Professor Hawking feel about his own mortality? Does death scare you? I'm not afraid of death, but I'm in no hurry to die. I have so much I want to do first. For most of us, it's a challenge to think ourselves into Stephen Hawking's world, let alone beyond that, into the countless multitude of other possible worlds his physics takes him to, in the search for a grand design. <laughs>